Hello, my name is Rogers Jackson. I am the pastor of the Emmanuel Baptist Church, 8301 South Damon Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60620. And we are thankful that you have tuned in to join us for the Sunday, June 28, 2020 sermon. If you have your Bible, would you turn with me to the 92nd number of the Psalm, verse 4. Psalm 92, verse 4. And this is what the Lord says. For thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. For thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. I want to talk about triumphing in the works of God's hand. Triumphing in the works of God's hands. As both you and I have already discovered, life in its sinful human structure cannot and will not run continually on the high-octane gas of being glad. Yes, my friends, life has the propensity as well as the tendency to make us feel glad today and somewhat not so glad on tomorrow. In her article, the Seven Habits of Highly Miserable People, Tamar Starr suggests the following. Some people are unhappy because they do not take responsibility for what got them into the mess that they are presently in. Other people stay unhappy as they constantly complain about their problems instead of working on them. And then there are others who are unhappy because they stay stuck in the hole they have fallen into instead of finding a way up and out of it. And then in his article, What Makes You Glad to Be Alive, Jordan Prochnow shares some things that makes us glad. Puppies, sunny days, friends and family, they make us glad to be alive. Music, sunrises, sunsets, and babies make us glad to be alive. Stars in the night, children and great-grandchildren, puppies and baby animals make both you and I glad to be alive. And then true friends and the unseen and exciting adventures of life that come to us, they also make us glad. And then in another article, How to Make Someone Happy and Glad, Henrik Edberg tells us to work on the following. Give someone a sincere compliment for a good effort that they made. Hold the door open for someone 
for a few extra seconds, it can put a smile on someone's face. Give someone an unexpected compliment to brighten their day. Listen to someone who has had a hectic moment and help them out of their negative space. Leave a thank you note for someone who has helped you. And then say a positive word to bring a ray of sunshine into someone's life today. Yes, my friends, wherever we can and whenever we are able, let us attempt to put gladness into someone's life today and on tomorrow by continually repeating the process. Let me ask you, what work or works have both you and I done that has made us as well as others glad today. In Psalm 92 and 4, King David says to every generation, For thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work. For thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work. In verse 4, the B clause, King David testifies that he did not make himself glad, but that the Lord made him glad for the Lord's work in his life. Note that King David did not say that he was glad through his own limited efforts. He was not glad because he had unfulfilled works. Rather, David declared, for thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy works, through your works, you have made me glad. Yes, my friends, both you and I and others are made glad, not through our works, but through the Lord's work. He is working within us. He is working throughout our lives. Yes, in verse 4 AB, King David testifies, for thou, Lord, has made me glad through your work. So your question to me is, what does it mean for you and I and others to be made glad through the Lord's work? In scripture, to be made glad through the Lord's work means that the Lord himself will put his joyful health in our face. To be made glad through the Lord's work, it means that the Lord himself will move us to rejoice in him in a jubilant celebration. To be made glad through the Lord's work, it means that we will willingly rejoice in the worship and in the praise because the Lord alone is the one who has restored us, renewed us, blessed us, saved us, as well as revived us. To be made glad through the Lord's work, it means that you and I will speak and make known his goodness and beauty to others throughout all the days of our life. To be made glad through the Lord's work is to lift him up and to lift him higher and higher because he is the one who continually restores us and makes our lives more abundant to be an expression of help and kindness to others. 
And then in verse 4, the D clause, King David declares, I will triumph in the works of thy hand. I will triumph in the works of thy hand. Your question to me is, what are the works of the Lord's hands where we find his triumphal victory? The works of the Lord's hands are his deeds of salvation. The works of the Lord's hands are his marvelous works that accomplishes his saving purpose in and throughout our lives. The works of the Lord's hands are his continuous performing grace that accomplishes his goals for our life as we put our trust in him. The works of the Lord's hands both conforms us and shapes us and directs us to carry out the Lord's saving business that he may be glorified and that many will be benefited. King David declares in verse 4d, I will triumph in the works of thy hands. Your question to me is, what does it mean for you and I to triumph, to have the victory in the works of God's hands? To triumph in the Lord's works and to triumph in the works of the Lord's hands. It means that both you and I will rejoice, we will celebrate, we will shout, and we will praise the Lord for his continuous support in our lives each day. To triumph in the works of the Lord's hand. It means to rush toward him and to shout with joy for his delivering victory in our lives from the enemy. Yes, to triumph in the works of the Lord's hand is to have the Lord's victory. To triumph in the Lord's hand, it is to succeed. To triumph in the Lord's hand is to prosper in every challenge. It is to grow through every difficulty that comes up against us that the Lord's name might be glorified and that many might be benefited by his great grace. It was the hymnist, Sabine Baron Gold, who penned the words of the Lord's victory, these words of triumph in the works of the Lord still rang, ring true today. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before, Christ, the royal master, leads against the foe, forward into battle, see his banner go. At the sign of triumph, Satan's host doth flee. On then, Christian soldiers, on to victory. Hell's foundation quiver at the shout of praise. People, lift your voices, loud your anthems raise. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Yes, my friends, even in times like these, we are and we will triumph in the works of the Lord's hand. Lord, we thank you for your victory in Jesus' name. Amen. My friend, I want to thank you for sharing this time with us. 
you have not had opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want you, as the Spirit moves you, to pray the prayer of salvation in your heart as I pray it aloud. If you never received Christ, today is the day of the joy of the Lord. Pray this prayer with me in your heart as I pray this prayer aloud and let the Lord Jesus Christ triumph in your life. Lord Jesus, I've heard great news and the great news is that you loved me so much that you came personally into the world to save me from my sin. Lord Jesus, right now, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me, Lord, of my shame. Forgive me, Lord, of my guilt by the blood of the cross on which you died to save me. Thank you, Lord. I receive you in my heart by faith. Now use me, Lord, in your service. In Jesus' name, amen.